And before we get into our, our message, I wanted to pray for us one more time. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, um, we just thank you for being our creator and our king. We thank you for uh, being everything to us. And we just thank you for meeting with us. And I just pray that right now as I speak, that it wouldn't be just me speaking, but that it would, it would be you speaking to us about the greatest event in history, the day that you rose from the dead, that you conquered death, that you conquered sin, and that you conquered the devil. And I just pray that every person in here would just um, come to a better understanding of who you are and how powerful you are, and that everything that you say that you will do, you do it. And I just pray that um, you'd open our hearts and our, and our minds to listen for your voice and help us to be more like you and to be changed by this powerful message of Jesus. And it's in his precious name I pray, amen. So last week we finished up our series of identity and just learning what it means to walk with Jesus and how we're all made in God's image. Everyone in here is special and unique and made in God's image. And we learned about how we're supposed to serve and how every person in here has gifts and talents from God and that God wants you to use those gifts and talents for him. And then last week we finished off this series with uh, sin and how sin can destroy our lives. And I gave examples of my friend who um, almost lost everything and he became depressed and he quit it, he, he lost his business because the sin that he was taking part in, it ruined his life. But Jesus has a better plan for us. He can help us with our sin. We don't have to struggle with sin anymore. Jesus can help us to have victory. And that's what we learned about last week. And this week we're starting just a two week series because we're getting into Christmas time and we're going to have different speakers come in and share about how Christmas has changed their life but this week we're starting a new series on apologetics, which is a study of who God is and also why we believe what we believe. And one of the biggest questions that people have and one of the biggest doubts that people have is, did Jesus really raise from the dead? Like, is that, is that possible? Because there are many critics, there are many doubters. And some of you even in here, which is okay, that's why we're here to learn about Jesus. You may have doubts. And in the past, you know, I'll admit that I've had doubts if Jesus really did raise from the dead. But I just wanted to start off with, I like basketball, so I like to use basketball stories. There's someone named Larry Bird, and uh, Larry Bird, he was one of the greatest players of all time. But something interesting about Larry Bird is that he was one of the best trash talkers. He would uh, tell people exactly the play that he was going to do, and then he would do it. <laughs> and then he would score doing it. For example, Xavier McDaniels, he was a player, a, a pretty um, famous player back then. They called him X-Men. One time, he, uh, he was guarding Larry Bird, and Larry Bird, he told him, he said, I'm gonna get the ball right here, and I'm gonna go to, I'm, gonna, I'm going to shoot it right in your face. So he pointed at the exact spot. He's like, I'm gonna get the ball right here, I'm gonna shoot it right in your face, and you're not gonna be able to stop me. So guess what happened? He did that. <laughs> He got the ball and he shot it right in Xavier McDaniel's face and he made the shot. And then he turned around and this, this was near the end of the game and he's like, oh, I didn't mean to leave two seconds on the clock, but I, I told you I was gonna do that and you couldn't stop me. There's another, another instance where one night he um, was, was having the night, one of the best nights of his career. And he told the Dallas bench, he was playing against Dallas, he told the Dallas bench, he said, he said I'm gonna stand right here and I'm not going to move. They'll pass me the ball, and the next sound you hear will be the ball hitting the bottom of the net. So guess what happened? The next play, he stood in the exact spot that he told the Dallas bench where he was gonna be, and he shot it, and it was nothing but net. And so that's, that'd be pretty annoying to guard someone like that. And the reason I tell you that story is because Larry Bird, he ta talked about what he was going to do, and no one could stop him. This is the same for Jesus, too. Jesus actually foretold of his death. He told his disciples and those around him over and over again. And it's one thing to talk about your death, but he also said, I'm not going to stay dead. I'm going to raise from the dead. And I'm sure there are many doubters back then, and there are still probably many doubters here right now. And I mean, in the world, there are a lot of doubters. But 
Jesus actually followed through on what he said he was going to do. Of course, this is much more significant than Larry Bird saying, you know, he's going to make a shot, and he does it. This is the greatest event in history that Jesus did. The, the, most, the most miraculous event that ever happened in the world. And today, I hope that you leave here understanding and believing more about who Jesus is and what he's done for us. And so he actually told his disciples over and over again what he was going to do. He said, as they were gathered in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man, which is Jesus, is about to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were greatly distressed. And so Jesus told them over and over again, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. Just like, you know, in the same way Larry Bird did. But this story is the greatest story because Jesus didn't just die. He rose from the dead. And another cool and amazing fact about Jesus is that no one actually took his life. He actually laid down his life of his own accord. He actually, when, when he was on the cross, he could have actually called down thousands of angels to come and to save him. But he chose to stay up there on the cross. And it actually says in John 10, it says, No one takes my life from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. Meaning that Jesus is the only person who has power over death. The only person who has power over everything. I mean, he spoke the world into existence. He holds the world together. The very breath that you breathe is from him. And Jesus, he shows this power by raising from the dead. And he said also, and, and when, when, when Jesus would say these kind of things, it's really interesting because they, they started, they called them like a lunatic and they called them crazy. And some people even said like, oh, you have, a, you have a demon in you. Like, why are you saying these kind of things? Right after Jesus said that, where he said, I have power to lay down my own life and to take it up again. They said, they said does this person have a demon? These aren't the words. And, and then they, they, they had seen Jesus' miracles. And they said, a demon can't make someone see again. A demon can't heal the blind, the sick, and the lame. So the claims they made about him were completely false. And their eyes were not open to see the truth. And I hope that today our eyes are open to see the truth of Jesus. And so one of the biggest questions of life is what happens after we die? What happens after we die? And we don't usually think about this because we're so caught up, caught up in the moment. Or we're so caught up in the here and now and the events that are going on around us right now. But can, death can be a frightening concept. It can be scary. One minute someone is here, and the next minute they're gone. Do we cease to exist after breathing? Or are we reborn again as another creature? Is there a life after death? If so, how could we ever know? And it's hard to imagine that we could place a hope in an afterlife without any proof. A lot of people, they're like, well, there's no proof for the afterlife. How can I, how can I know that that's, 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 a, that's a thing? And, you know, there are a lot of different beliefs on this. And I know a lot of you have friends that are maybe Islam. You have friends that are Buddhist, that are Hindu. And I just want to briefly touch on what each of these religions believe. Islam, they believe that people have immortal souls. And then after death, the destination depends on a person's good and bad deeds. Oof, that's a lot of pressure, huh? If you die and your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds and you go to heaven, oof, I, I, that, that's kind of scary. Islam teaches that everyone will be resurrected and face final judgment. People who are faithful and good will enter paradise. People who are unfaithful and wicked will enter hell. Man, that, that's a lot of pressure right there. I'm glad that as a Christian, it doesn't depend on me and my works. It depends on Jesus and what he did for me. It depends on Jesus' righteousness and his perfection. Because I could never measure up. I bet my bad deeds way outweigh my, my good deeds. And I don't know, maybe some of you feel the same way. And even if our good deeds outweigh our bad deeds, they're not enough. In Buddhism, people usually experience reincarnation based on their actions. Oh, there's that word actions again actions and good works and their desires in this life 
And the ultimate goal is to end the cycle of reincarnation and reach an enlightened state called nirvana. So here's another religion that um, they think that after death, you are reincarnated. And maybe there's no afterlife. You just keep on going and going until you reach the state of nirvana. Then there's one more that I wanted to talk about, and that is Hinduism. And the core Hindu belief about what happens after death focuses on reincarnation as well. Most Hindus believe in an eternal and mortal soul that is reincarnated at death based on its actions in life known as karma. And Hinduism tries eliminating bad karma through good actions. And, and you know, those good actions can be meditation, spiritual devotion, or freedom from ignorance and desire. And so I say all this to a lot of you are like, what does this have to do with the afterlife? What does this have to do with Jesus' death and resurrection? Well, what it has to do with it is the right way, well, what we believe is that every person will die and go to heaven or hell, not based on the good things that we do, but based on our belief and trust in Jesus. And, and you know, this is so freeing to us because these other religions, they try to be good enough. They try to do all these things. And, and work their way to heaven. When Jesus is at the top, he's saying, or he's at the bottom saying, it is finished. You don't have to work your way to heaven. I've already done it. And it says in, in Matthew 25, 46, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So this is what Christians believe, is that those who have put their trust in Jesus, they will have eternal life. And those who do not put their trust in Jesus, you will not have eternal life. You will be separated from God forever. And so I just want to ask you, which of these religions is the most appeasing to you? Is it one where the work is already done, where you just accept that work, and you rest in what Jesus has done for you? Or is it in, a, in an unfamiliar territory where you don't know where, you're on the, uh, uh, where, you're, where you are on the spectrum? You don't know if you've been good enough. You don't know if the bad things in your life have made it so you can't be in heaven. These other religions are a little bit scary. Jesus already did everything. We don't have to do anything to, to, to be in heaven except for receive and trust in him. And so another question that people have is, and I'll, I'll get to Jesus' resurrection in a minute, but is what, is what kind of proof is there of the afterlife? Like, is there proof of the afterlife? Many people have looked for some sort of proof that life exists beyond the grave. Some people claim they communicate with the spirits of dead people. Others have out-of-body experiences where they feel like they're floating above their body. Or near-death experiences where they experience what they believe is heaven while their body is dying. Are these things enough proof for us to believe in life after death? And so people have all different views and, and explanations on this. But Jesus tells us that he's the only way to have life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so the truth is, there's only one way we can be sure of life after death. And that is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died and rose from the grave, then he met with over 500 people to confirm that he was actually alive. We can have life after death. And we don't have to be afraid that we don't have to be unsure. That we don't have to continue working and trying harder or try to be good on our own. That Jesus did it. And we can put trust in him. And Paul calls Jesus the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. In the Bible, first fruits were an offering to God of the first produce of a harvest. In other words, Jesus' resurrection, were, was his death and resurrection, we're an offering to God that confirms other resurrections will follow. So because Jesus died and rose from the dead, we can also die and have life. Like what I shared at the beginning of our uh, sermon today. And there's been a lot of people that have tried to prove that Jesus is not real. That he did not really raise from the dead. This is a person named Josh McDowell who used to be an atheist. And he came across some friends at college. And his goal... He told his friends, was I'm going to do everything I can to prove that you're a fool. That the God that you follow is, did not really raise from the dead. That he's not real. And so he went to other countries. 
He spent all sorts of money on trying to disprove God. And guess what kind of conclusion he came to? He came to the conclusion that there is absolutely evidence that Jesus died and rose from the dead, and that he was the Son of God. And he could not deny those facts. He actually said at the end of his conclusion, he said, if I were to remain intellectually honest, I had to admit that the Old and New Testament documents were some of the most reliable writings in all of history. And if they were reliable, what about this man, Jesus, who I, whom I have dismissed as more than as a mere carpenter? I had to admit that Jesus was more than a carpenter. He was all that he claimed to be. And, G, and, and then Josh McDowell, he lists out these different evidences that Jesus really was a man, that he really was the son of God, that he really did die and raise from the dead. And he writes this huge book, that I actually have this book, it's probably take you about, uh, about a year to read, it's almost as big as the Bible. But in this, in this book, he gives all the evidence for Jesus. And he even points to all the historians that had written about Jesus, that he was a real person. And I just wanna share with you just a few of these things, and we could talk about this for months. Some of the proofs that Jesus did die and raised from the dead for our sins. And these are some of the things that he came up with. So the first is that the stone, when Jesus died, they, they put him in this big tomb, and this tomb was impossible to move with just, you know, two people. But when Jesus died and he rose from the dead, the stone was rolled away, and the body was gone. The tomb was empty. And the verse that goes along with each of these evidences is right next to it. And so the body was gone. Like, where, where did the body go? Some people actually claim that the disciples came and they stole that body away. That, you know, they were just trying to, trying to act like Jesus rose from the dead. But this isn't possible. Because next to, um, down, down on the third point, it says that he appeared to over 500 people. And all these witnesses... They saw Jesus face to face. And there was no way that those people, all those people would have lied. Like, that, that's, that's not possible. Also, if, if they had stolen the body, how come the body had never been found? They, they never found the body of Jesus because after he died, he went up into heaven. And he li that's where he lives right now. So those are things that, that, that prove that Jesus really did raise from the dead. So the body was nowhere to be found. He appeared to over 500 witnesses. He also let the disciples touch his scars, and he ate with them. He appeared to them in, in a room, and he ate with them, and he let them touch his scars. Who, what other person would have those kind of scars? Only someone who had been crucified, that had the nails in his wrist, and the nails in his feet. So this is another, more evidence. You know, I feel like the greatest evidence is that the disciples were willing to die for Jesus. I don't think if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, they would have been willing to give up their lives for him. They wouldn't have been able to sacrifice everything for him. So their personal experiences with him, they made them live out a faith that was bold and reckless, where they were willing to give up everything for him. And you know, that's the evidence I have, is that like I've experienced Jesus like so much. Like you couldn't, you couldn't like talk me into not believing in Jesus because he's so real to me. I mean, he's the reason I'm here right now. He's the reason I do everything. He's involved in every relationship I have and every decision I make. I've experienced him and I talked with him this morning and I spent time with him and he talked to me. I mean, not in an audible voice. I don't want you to think like, oh, I'm some prophet that, you know, God speaks to directly. But as I read the word, he spoke to me and I've experienced him. And so you can't tell me that Jesus isn't real. I mean, you can believe that for yourself, but there's no way you can make me deny that. And I don't know if most of you know, I think this is also proof that Jesus really did raise from the dead, is that all the other gods and other religions, they're dead. Jesus is the only one that's alive. We have a God that's not dead. And I don't know if you know this either, but Christianity is the largest religion in the world. Would all these people follow something that is not is not valid that is not based on on facts and evidence and truth 
I don't think so. It said, I found out that, that the world is made up of 31% of people who follow Jesus. And I, I don't like to say religion because religions are usually a list of things to do and rules to follow. But Christianity is the biggest religion. And it's more about a relationship instead of a religion, though. The second biggest is Islam. They have about 25% of people in the world are Islam. So really, the greatest proof for me is that Jesus, I have experienced him firsthand. And I have witnessed his miracles. And I, I, I've heard him speak to me. And he's guided me. And I just want to encourage you that you can also experience him. It says if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. And so this is available to every person in here, a relationship with Jesus. And I can tell you all I want, all, all, all I want about how awesome Jesus is and how amazing it is to have him as my Lord and Savior. But until you experience it yourself, your life will, will never be the same. It's like um, recently, a few days ago, I bought this uh, pecan pie. It's uh, one of my favorite kind of pies at Costco. And I've been eating a little bit too much of it. I usually maybe only eat like half a slice because I try to watch my sugar and carb count. But um, I can tell you all I want how amazing this pie is. But until you taste it for yourself, you won't know how amazing it is. That's how it is with Jesus. Until you experience firsthand him, then it won't be enough. I can talk about him all, all I want and tell you and urge you to follow him all I want. But until you experience him, then, then you won't, it won't make sense to you. And so Jesus is the most amazing and most powerful being to ever exist. And because of what Jesus did, it confirms that he can give us life. It confirms that everything that he said he was going to do, he did it. And that he's going to continue to do it. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 13 through 15, it says, For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. And we apostles would be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave, but that he can't be, that, but that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And so since Jesus died and rose from the dead, there is hope for us after life. There is resurrection for us. But if the, all, all of Christianity hinges on this one fact, that Jesus did conquer the grave, that he did raise from the dead. And this means that the resurrection of Jesus is the single most important event in all of history. When Jesus was resurrected, sin, death, and Satan were defeated. And all the promises he said were confirmed. And one thing that he promised is that those followers who would follow him would have eternal life with God. He said that they would join him in paradise, where he's preparing a place for us. And those who deny him and continue to rebel against him will live in eternal punishment, separated from God forever. And because he defeated death through the resurrection, we know that what he said is trustworthy. And the choice is up to you. Will you call him and label him a lunatic and a liar? Or will you acknowledge that he is the truth, that he is the only way to get to heaven? Don't you see the proof that he really did die and raise from the dead? That we serve a God that is not dead, that he's alive, and that he's at work in many of your lives. And I've seen him at work in your lives. And a lot of you have experienced him. And I know many of you can say the same things I'm saying. That there's no way you can convince me there's not a God. And because Jesus died and rose from the dead, we have hope. We have hope in this life and in the life to come. You know, when, we, when Jesus died and rose from the dead, it accomplished many things for us. It made it possible so we can have our sins forgiven. It made it possible so we can have a relationship with God. It made it possible so we can be made right. And that someday our suffering will end. And that our lives will have meaning. And that death is not the end. And if we follow Christ, we will be raised with him. When we die, we won't ultimately die. We will be raised to life to be with him forever. So what exactly will that look like? You know, eternal life. 
It's kind of scary. But what it means, the Bible says that we will live eternally in union with God. And we will be surrounded by our loved ones, other people who follow Jesus and have made him their Lord and Savior. We will be surrounded by people of all different ethnicities, from all different countries, and we will worship God together. And you know, this is one of the most excited, the most exciting thing about heaven is that we'll be with Jesus forever. We'll see him face to face. I can't wait to hug Jesus and to spend time with him and talk with him and just thank him for what he's done for me. And also it says in Revelation 21, 4, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And so Jesus says that there will never be any more pain or suffering again. You know, the, the, the hard things that you go through now, the things that cause you pain and sadness and, and, uh, and suffering, that will never happen again. When you're with Jesus, all that disappears. You'll be perfect. You'll be with Jesus. You'll be with your friends forever, those friends that put their trust in Christ. So Jesus gives us hope. He's a living hope. And so what happened to Christ can happen for us. In the same way that Christ was raised from the dead, he will raise us from the dead. And I want us to imagine right now, the difference in being at a funeral where there's, there are believers, the person that died is a Christian, and then being at a funeral where the person that died is not a Christian. Imagine the difference between those two funerals. The people who are not Christians what kind of hope do they have? They'll never see their friend again based on their understanding of truth and what the world is. Everything that they treasured in this life is gone. The loss of everything they were able to have and enjoy in this life, it's gone forever. There's no comfort for the loved ones who lose that person who, who passed away, who has no relationship with Jesus. How much better is it to attend a Christian wedding where the person who died has a relationship with Jesus? Where there is singing, where there is assurance and comfort that that's not the end. That God promises that they will meet again someday. That that won't be the last time that they will see their friend, their loved one. How different of a reality that is. That's, that's, that's a pretty stark difference. What kind of funeral would you like to be a part of? Or what you want your family to partake in. One then where they know for sure that Jesus was resurrected and that Jesus saved them from their sins. Or one that they'll never know what happened to them. Well, I mean, we know. You know, they're in hell. But that's such a difference. And it's so important that we get right with God. Because our life can be here today and gone tomorrow. Let me tell you about a friend. This is my friend from high school named Cedric. And Cedric went to China with me on a mission trip uh, my senior year of high school. And he was an awesome guy, um, really loved the Lord and served him. And he had a, a beautiful wife. But one day earlier this year, he was riding his motorcycle and a car ran a stop sign and hit him. And he, it killed him. Just like that, he was gone. Well, not just like that. They took him to the hospital. They tried to revive him. They tried to, you know, perform the surgeries on him to save his life. But unfortunately, he didn't make it. And, you know, I wasn't really that close to Cedric, but knowing someone that's passed away makes death more real to you. It, it, it opens your eyes. Like, wow, this, this is the end. That's the end of his life. And, you know, only God knows when we'll have our last day on earth. We can't, we can't pick the day. But if we know Jesus, we have nothing to fear. And thankfully, Cedric, he knew Jesus. And he's in heaven right now. And he's never going to experience pain or sadness or sickness again. He's, gonna, he's safe with the Father. And this is, uh, I love that, that God uses everything for his good. Because his mom's faith has grown so much since, since he passed away. And also, you know, I know a lot of you don't have sons or daughters, but... For those of you that do, imagine this happening to your son or daughter. That's, that's really tough. That's challenging. 
and what would happen if, if this happened to you? But this is what happened. This is what his mom has said, and she posts stuff all the time about how her faith has grown and how she's so happy that Cedric is not in this in this world anymore because he's in a better place. So this is what one of her posts that that she said. She said, "There's such pain and sadness, but the joy is creeping in, knowing where Cedric is." in the incomprehensible happiness he has right now. I wouldn't want him to leave heaven for this crazy world. His memorial service took my breath away, above and beyond. His life was just as God, God saw fit, for ultimate good that we may not fully see on this earth. And that's okay, because Jesus knows far better than I what is truly best. And I want to honor God by remembering this beautiful creation of a human that impacted many people, my son and child of God. Those are such powerful words that she knows that Cedric is experiencing incomprehensible happiness and that she wouldn't want him to leave. She wouldn't want to ha have him on this earth anymore because he's happier than he's ever been. The joys that he's experiencing in heaven far outweigh anything he could experience on this earth. And so we have a living hope because Jesus rose from the dead. He conquered the grave, and he has power to give you life forever. I'm reminded of a song, uh, Because He Lives. It says, Because He Lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He Lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He lives. And I think we can also say that you know, life is worth the dying because we know he lives and because he gives us a hope. And we can be for, we can be sure where we're going to go when we die. We don't have to doubt or question or, or have, have, like, we don't, we don't have to be unsure. We can know, we can know for, and know for sure that Jesus can save us, that he can resurrect us. And so I just want to challenge you, give these three challenges to you to end our time together. And we're ending a little bit earlier. The first is to be encouraged. That, you know, we have a God who is not dead. That he's alive. And he has power to give you life too. And this is not true of other religions. All other religions, they're based on your good works and on gods and people that are dead. And so I just want to encourage you that if you have lost a loved one, it's perfectly okay to, to mourn that loved one but also realize that they're in a better place if they had a relationship with Jesus. And separation is difficult. And even Jesus cried when, when his friend died, Lazarus. But death should not cause us to despair. That we have a hope, and one day we will be reunited with those who follow Christ, with those who have received him into their lives. And death is not the end. So we need to take time to share that encouragement with others, who are grieving after the loss of loved ones. You know, COVID and all the other things that have happened over this past year have caused a lot of death and pain. And we can encourage each other with this truth that death is not the end. And if you have Jesus, you will get to see your loved ones again, that you'll get to be with them forever in a better place where there'll be no more tears, no more death, no more sadness or sickness, no more suffering. I also want to challenge you that if you still are having doubts, like Josh McDowell had, he sought to disprove God. I want to challenge and encourage you to go and do the research yourself. And the Bible says that if you seek him, you will find him. And I believe that with all my heart, the more that you try to disprove God, the more that you will see that he is real, that he is true, and he will reveal himself to you, and he'll change your life. He'll give you the best life that, that you could ever imagine. And it may not be an easy life. It may not be always what you want, but it's the best life because it leads to eternal life. And so I just want to challenge you and encourage you for those who are still doubting, don't wait. Don't wait to do your research. Don't wait to try to seek out God. It says, seek God while he may be found. Next week it might be too late. I know none of you ride motorcycles in here, but um, you know our lives could end tomorrow or today, or next week. So seek him while he can be found. And then I also want to encourage you with just the, with that eternal life, it starts now. 
Jesus died and rose from the dead and is in heaven right now, but he also, you can experience him right now on this earth. And walking with Jesus is better than anything else in this life. And it gives us, he gives our lives meaning. And we can know that, that today, if we have a relationship with God, our life will never end. And that someday we'll never experience pain or sadness or sickness. That he will help us. And everything we go through in life, we have an advocate in Jesus to help us. It even says in Romans 8 that Jesus is praying for you all the time. That's pretty amazing that the Son of God is praying for us. And so eternal life starts now. Don't wait before it's too late. And you know, it says that even nothing can separate us from the love of God. That once you have a relationship with Jesus, nothing can separate you from that love. Nothing can take you away. That he will always leave you. He will never leave you. He will never leave you and never forsake you. And this is the greatest love that you will ever experience in this life. And so I just want to challenge you, for those who do not know Jesus today, to make that decision to receive him into your life so that you can be sure of your afterlife. So that you can know that if you were to pass away today and you were to stand before God, that you had Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And for those of you who are Christians, go and tell others about this. Tell others about what Jesus did for you, and how he died and rose from the dead, and how he's changed your life, how you've experienced him. And so I hope that today you are more sure of your faith in Jesus because of the evidence that, that is put forth. The evidence that is not my evidence. It's not Josh McDowell's evidence. It's God's evidence. And I think it's clear that when we look at the world and we see how complex creation is, that you can't deny that there's, no, there's not a creator. It's, it's too complex. I mean, I, I like to go to the national parks and, and just be out in nature. And when I see how majestic and glorious and huge all these things are in nature, like, I can't deny that there's someone that created that. It didn't just come to be out of nothing. So there's so much evidence for God. There's so much evidence for Jesus' death and resurrection. Put your hope in him today because he'll never let you down. And it gives you a hope that you, it makes you, you don't want to be scared of anything. You don't want to be scared of life, what's in this life. You don't want to be scared of death because Jesus has conquered death. And Jesus walked through the same earth so that he could help you in this life as well. So let's go ahead and close in prayer. And then we will have um, our worship team come on up. So let's uh, go ahead and close in prayer first. Dear God, I just uh, thank you so much for loving us. I thank you for leaving your throne in heaven, that even though you were the king of the universe, that you came down and died and suffered in our place for our sin. And it wasn't because anybody forced you to. It's because you wanted to. And you wanted to forgive us. You wanted us to have life with you. And I just pray that every person in here their eyes would be open to see how great and how mighty and awesome that you are, that death couldn't hold you, and that you are alive in heaven right now. And I just pray that we would walk with you every day and that you would teach us and that we would listen for your voice. And we thank you for just loving us so much. We know that every person in this room is so valuable to you, that each person in this room you died for and you love and you want to have a relationship with. And I just pray that you would help them to, to, to desire that as well. Help me to desire that. And may we search out truth. May we not be unsure of what happens after death. May we be confident that what you say you will do, you will do. And so we just thank you for this time and thank you for your word. And thank you for just speaking to us. And help us to just love you more every day and to love those around us better too. And to tell this truth, we know that there are many who are dying, even today, who have not heard about Jesus. And so help us to be a light to the world and to share this truth about you. And we just uh, love you so much. Thank you for loving us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's go ahead and have the worship team come on up.
this one will use um, YouTube, but we'll, we'll add a bit of 